Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be making a melt and pour soap project. Melt and pour is very easy, very fun to do, very beginner friendly. And since I just got in an order of some mixed melt and pour soaps, I thought it would be great to share it with you. The first thing you want to do is to melt down some clear melt and pour soap base. I'm using a double boiler here. It's very practical for me, so you can see here, melt and pour. I have a heat safe measuring cup and then I add 100 milliliters depending how big your mold is and then you can add your colorant here I'm using fizzy lemonade from brambleberry that was pre-mixed with rubbing alcohol and then I'm adding a fragrance here lemon essential oil from mystic moments and I like to use a whisk to mix everything until it's very well blended and then you can just pour it in a mold of your choice. I like to place my molds on a tray so I can easily move the molds around if I need my working table for something else. And then with rubbing alcohol you want to spritz away the air bubbles here. And that's it, you're done. You can move to the next one. So I'm again adding about 100 grams here, or 100 milliliters, for the next soap, to which I'm going to add this Tangerine Wow colorant from Brambleberry. It's very vibrant. I absolutely love it. It's also very nice for cold process soap. Just adding a little bit. And I'm adding this seven-fold orange essential oil from a German company called Dragon Spice, but you can Really use any fragrance you want and any color and fragrance combination really. And I'm using my whisk again to blend everything. And as you can see, this is a very easy, very straightforward procedure. It's really literally melt and pour. Moving on to the next one, here I'm using a colorant that uh, I just recently got. It's called Fantasia Pink from You Make It Up. I thought it would be a good color. And to it I use strawberry fragrance oil from Brambleberry. I like always to have this color coordination between the fragrance and the color. And I'm mixing it again. Melt and pour doesn't need so much fragrance oil since it holds fragrance very well, as opposed to cold process soap, which is different. And then I had some strawberry embeds that I thought it would be nice to incorporate into the soap and see what effect we can do with it. So let's see how it turns out. Giving it a spritz again with rubbing alcohol. And we are ready for the next one. It's very practical to use these measuring cups. And to this one I'm adding burlesque mica. This is one of my favorite colors that I'm using quite often. It's just a very rich bold all kind of pink. And then I'm adding raspberry fragrance oil from Mystic Moments. Mystic Moments has a, a lot of uh, fragrance oils that are really high quality and very nice for melt and pour soap quite some and then just pour it in again and you're good so this one is purple passion from you make it up as well it's a great color I love it I love it also in cold process soap and in Melt and Pour, the micas really have this uh, fantastic effect of pearly, shiny, shimmery, which I love. And then I have this absolute amazing fragrance oil that is called Toasted Almonds and Plum Crumble from Saint Perfect, which is literally something you want to drink. I'm adding a little bit of glitter here, just for a little pop. Trying to make every soap look a little different because it's fun and why not? 
I don't think that the camera really picks up on the glitter, but in life you will definitely see it. All right, this one is ready too. A little spritz and that's it. Oh, I had some uh, raspberries, so I thought it would be great to just add them into the soap for an additional interest. Okay. Next one here, that's another neon kind of colorant from Brambleberry called Electric Bubblegum. I love it, you just need a little tiny bit. It's also awesome if you want to use it in cold process soap. And then I'm adding this watermelon fragrance oil from Mystic Moments. It's also a very yummy summer type of fragrance oil. Give it a good mix. You can see the pink is really very vibrant, very neon type. It's really cool, even though it doesn't look like a watermelon, but that's not what we are aiming for. And then here I'm going to add some poppy seeds to kind of simulate the seeds of the watermelon. And it's just for, for fun. So it's just regular poppy seeds you get at a grocery store. Give it a spritz again and uh, disperse the seeds a little better throughout the soap. And then you have a cool effect. So for the next soap I'm using another colorant I really love. It's called Fire Fusion from You Make It Up. It's a nice red and then I'm using this frosted candy apple which is a fragrance I recently got and I'm absolutely happy with it. I'm also using it in my cold process soap. It smells amazing, I have to say. And then, as usual, I just blend everything in. If you have some problems and you see that the mica is not really blending well, you can use rubbing alcohol. It breaks down the clumps as well. And then here I had some little balls that I made with a mold from Brambleberry, the mini ball mold and uh, I also thought it would be great to add this one to the soap which I will call candy apple and see how it turns out. Another color and I absolutely love is Sangria Mica. This is a more like a brownish kind of red that is really rich and deep from the same company and I'm using a passion fruit rose from Brambleberry here. It's a nice tropical scent. Very sweet. And there are so many variations and ideas you can come up with using colors and fragrances and maybe including even some embeds, why not, to make this melt and pour soap. This colorant here is a very nice one as well. It's called Buttercup Mica and it is not a neon yellow but a very bright, happy kind of yellow. So if you're looking for a non-neon version, this one you will love. And then we add some tropical milk and honey fragrance oil, which is a tropical coconut type of uh, fragrance oil that will not discolor cold process soap. And then here I had some little embeds that I made earlier on, some lime slices that I wanted to add to the soap because it's tropical soap and why not, you know, it looks cute. So adding these to the soap. Give it a spritz and then just making sure that the lime slices are distributed well. And this one is a new colorant I got. It's Sapphire Mica from You Make It Up. I wanted to have like this very dark midnight blue kind of uh, colorant. And it's also very shiny, pearly. Absolutely love it. And then I'm adding this wild vetiver fragrance from Saint Perfect. 
This is a very fresh, very clean kind of fragrance, which is good, you know, to balance out all this sweet fragrances that we had and with the fruity types of soap. And I always like to have a little variation, a little bit of everything. And for the next one, I'm using a colorant that I got from Nurture Soap. It's a black mica, it's called Nocturnal Mica. Of course, you can also use some water-soluble colorants for melt and pour, that's no problem. I just chose this one because I think I like this pearly kind of look. I add a little bit of glitter because it's just nice and, you know, kind of elegant. And then I have this fragrance oil that is called Lucky, that is a Chanel duplication, which is like a floral type. And I think it's just nice to have like a black soap with glitter that smells like Chanel, you know, very elegant. For the next soap, I'm going to be using um, the Bloon Gold Mica. It's a mica that I'm using very often, I love it. And the um, fragrance oil is called Almond Biscotti. I don't know if you know what that is. This is an Italian treat and it's called Cantuccini. Maybe you've heard of that before. So this is a fantastic fragrance oil. If you use it in cold process soap, you don't need to color your soap. It will turn into a deep brown without any colorant. But for melt and pour, that's a different thing. So we just want to tint it a little bit. I want to have it a transparent kind of look, you know, just a little bit color in it. Adding a little bit of fizzy lemonade to give it a bit more body. And then that's it. It's a very nice fragrance. I love it. Very sweet though. So here I'm uh, pouring 200 milliliters because I want to make two soaps for this particular type here. And I'm using the blue and gold mica again. I love this uh, mica. It's very pearly in melt and pour soap. I'm using more than before because I want it to be a really dark, rich color. It's gonna be a honey type soap. This fragrance oil here, dark honey and tobacco is absolutely amazing. You see, it mixes in very well. You don't need rubbing alcohol for this at all. And the whisk is really helpful. I think it's better than the spatula for this particular type of soap. And then later on, I'm going to be adding some bubble wrap, some regular bubble wrap, to simulate some uh, honeycomb look. Gives a fun addition to it. But I'm gonna wait that it cools down a little bit first. This one here is two soaps. And this is for all the coffee lovers, an idea that you could do, that is really fun. I'm using chestnut brown mica. It's a very rich brown color, very warm color. And then I'm adding this Jamaican cafe in walnuts. It is a bitter kind of amazing coffee fragrance. To make these a little bit different than from the other ones, I have some coffee beans that I made with melt and pour soap that I'm adding inside of the soap. You could also use some regular coffee beans, but I think it's better to have it made out of soap so you won't have problems in your bathtub. And this is going to be a whiskey fragrance oil. So I'm adding just a little bit of this buttercup mica, just to tint it. I want to have, you know, like a clear kind of look here. 
I'm adding whiskey on the rocks from Saint Perfect. Nice one also. Very nice for gentlemen. And then I have some little cubes that I made out of out of clear melt and pour soap that I'm going to add to simulate some ice cubes. As you can see here, I'm trying to distribute it a little bit everywhere. And then we add the soap and what will happen will happen. A little spritz again. And now we add this bubble wrap to the honey soaps. And it doesn't need to be perfect. You just make sure that you that it sticks to the soap. And then once the soap is dry, you can remove the bubble wrap easily. All right, the next soap I'm going to color just with a shimmer mica, pearl shimmer, pearl mica. And I'm gonna add baby powder. I don't know if you remember the scent of baby powder. We had this uh, very famous Borotalco. Borotalco. It has this very specific fragrance to it that I absolutely love. So I think it really looks like baby powder. And then the last one, I'm gonna use also a very nice uh, mica. Lush Pink Mica, that's the name. It's also a very pearly, feminine, pale pink. And I'm adding Rose Garden fragrance from Mystic Moments. That's also more like a floral type, feminine type of soap, just to balance out all the fruity notes and the sweet notes and so forth. Just want to make sure that it's really well blended and then I'm adding it. To the mold. Give it a spritz. So that's it. All we need to do is now to wait for them to harden. It's better not to put them in the fridge. Just leave them like this. It will make them sweat less in my experience. And we're gonna be back very soon for the unmolding. It's time for unmolding, so I'm just gonna show you in a fast forward modus. So the next step is, once the soaps are done, to shrink wrap them or to put them in cellophane bags as you prefer. I'm using an impulse sealer here, it's very easy to use, I can link it down in the description box. 
you hold it down like this, you wait until the lamp switch is off and then it's sealed and you can just, you know, easily prepare them for shrink wrapping like so. You can also just use cellophane and add a little ribbon to it as you prefer, what you like better, no problem at all. I like this method here, pretty easy and pretty straightforward. It's very important when you do melt and pour soaps that you immediately put them into a, into a packaging because otherwise they will sweat. It means they will draw moisture from the environment and form these little pearls on the soap that are not really pleasant to look at. And then you want to shrink wrap it. So I'm using a heat gun here that I'm placing in a bowl like so because it gets very hot and then I can just pop it in there without being afraid of, you know, uh, burning anything. So you want to wait until the heat gun is a bit heated up and then from the sides you gently shrink wrap it. And I like to put the corners down a little bit by, you will see it, you know, to to have everything really smooth, just like so. It's very easy. You can also use a regular hair dryer if it's hot enough. If you have the shrink wrap plastic that is um, suitable for heat shrinking. And then you just continue like this until everything is shrink wrapped. Then at the end what I like to do is add a label that describes what the soap is, typically the fragrance. And this is how it looks. I just made some very simple glossy labels that I add to the front. Just like so. Very easy. Very fun. So every soap has its own label.
I really hope you enjoyed this video, maybe even found some tips helpful for you. And I hope to see you around very soon for another one. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.